Tilo, what's popping? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, just in case. Not saying it is, but just in case. There's just a warning screen. Read it and weep. Don't forget, man, you can catch a live stream at twitch.com. At the bottom of the screen is the username. We do got Patreon. We post five days a week. We cannot post that stuff that also on there to here. It's different. And we also got merch, man. Got mine on the link to all of that is in the description. This is Camp Pay. We'll take it away. Season 5, Episode 1. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. In 2016, more county court judgments were issued against consumers in England and Wales than any other year on record. With a 20% rise in the second half of the year, the average amount owed is nearly £1,800. High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Brown is a former soldier who served in Afghanistan and Iraq before becoming an agent to... This is letting me know that bro's gonna be a traditional try-hard. He's gonna be a traditional try-hard. I'm already knowing it. Years ago, together with trainee Connor Jackson, he works all over London and the South East, recovering debts and seizing goods. Today, they're in Bromley, South London, to recover over £11,000 owed by Lee Carpenter to an accident claims company. Yeah, South London. Quite a lot of debt. Looks like it could be something to do with a car accident payout. This isn't the first visit the agents have paid Mr Carpenter. Last time, no one was home. But with an early morning call, they're hoping to catch him in. Yeah, See if we can get inside well. first. And uh, see if he actually opens the door for us. But this is going to be one of the most remarkable cases Gary and Connor have ever encountered. This going to be remarkable? Hold on now. Got your phone? Yeah. The address is on the second floor of a block of flats. I'm not going to lie, buddy, right here, about six, seven. So definitely in. We saw the lights on outside. Hello, Mr. Carpenter. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Do you want to come and speak to us, please? Oh, Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Hello. My name is Mr. Brown, High Court Enforcement Agent. This is my colleague, Mr. Jackson. You're banging on my mum's door. Okay, well, this is the address they've given us. That's why we're here. Maybe that's fair enough, but this is not my house. I don't care you guys in this suit and whatnot. I'm not afraid of none of you. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah, because yeah. you got to come to my yard. Yeah, I'm a madman and you don't want that right now. Lee. You don't know nothing. Yeah, you ain't no bad man in these suits. There's no point telling you nothing. I don't want to explain nothing to no one anymore. I'm sick and tired of explaining my life. Yeah? Go on, man. Tell me what's going on with this thing, guys. I'm just going to get... The man them fed up. I knew, I knew that this is the energy that that, that I knew that this is late night energy. Early morning for bro, late night for us. Despite the hostile reaction, the agents must persist in enforcing the writ here today. Basically, they took you to court last year. Now, ultimately, they want the money. I ain't got 11 grand. You're not going to be able to pay 11 grand in one go. I'm not expecting that. But we need to put something in motion. With Mr. Carpenter claiming he can't pay, the agents need to gain entry to the flat to assess his personal circumstances. I've had that bad every year, you know. I'm not really living properly with my family. I'll show you. Okay. See? As Mr. Carpenter lets the agents... Oh, man, dude got multiple, multiple personalities. He cool now. In, 
his mother Maureen appears in the hallway. It's fine, man, don't worry. She seems to know all about the £11,000 debt. He did try to solve it when he first had one of those, and we did offer to help, and he said he wanted to do it himself. We're, we're going to need to take some money today. We're going to need something substantial today. What, what's substantial? Normally, we look at collecting at least half the debt. Have you got any savings? What do you do for a living, Lee? What work as a um, shelf stacker at night. Minimum wage, sure. Sort of thing. Yeah. He's got no money on him. I'm not giving him any money. So now, what's he going to do? As much I could probably offer is about hundred pound today. It's That's disrespectful. You shouldn't even have said that. It's clear that Mr. Carpenter isn't able to make the agents a credible offer. But Gary and Connor still need to get this case resolved one way or another. The client have instructed us, if we don't get the money, we have to remove goods. Whatever you find in here is mine, apart from what you see in there. OK. Um, can we have a look around the rest of the property? Yeah. All right. Unless Maureen can prove the goods in the property belong to her and not to her son, they could be removed. Gary this has got to be the worst feeling as a son. I would never put my mom's name on anything, brother. Not one thing. He starts an infantry in the front room, where Maureen's other son and grandson are watching TV. You right there, fellas? I need to take a picture of this room, guys. You shouldn't be taking photos of my stuff. We have to see proof that the goods don't belong to him. Whatever's in here is mine. I pay all the bills. Have you? I furnished the home. Thing is, when we when we ask for proof, it's things like sales receipts, sales invoices. This is ridiculous, guys. Hold on, just so you can borrow. Can I, can I, There's all the old receipts. Maureen, can I just That's explain this to Lee? Of pay things that I pay Lee, for, do you wanna? And do you none wanna? of them. I'm not gonna lie. As an African American, my mama keep all her receipts. So if they slid to my house in this predicament, she would have been just like that. Oh no, I got it. <laughs> Here's the receipt, buddy. I ain't getting away with none of my mom's stuff. Yeah, to here. That's what we've asked for. It would be I'm going pretty much everything in the property. We don't want to do that. Fridge! Freeze that! Look! I'm trying it, look, look! That doesn't help look. anyone. Have a look! I'm not doing anything. Come out, come out. Have a look. I'll step out, I'll step out. Have a look! Look! Maureen. It's all receipts. Have a look and go. Making my family mess. Come out. Maureen, please, please stay calm. Please stay calm. Please just leave. We can't look. She's upset now. I understand that. Just leave. No, no, no. They're not taking nothing. Call the police. Call them. They can't take that. No, where's the phone? If somebody has. Dang, bro went from. I'm a, what did he say when they opened the door? I'm a messed up individual. I'm, I'm on all the smoke, basically. To call the police? That type of turnaround is crazy. As assets, I'm going to use that because I'm there to collect a debt that's been ordered by the courts on behalf of a client. Yeah, he definitely on booger sugar. 100%. Y'all seen how he opened the door? Bro, eyes are still open. He hasn't blinked once since they came in the apartment. I'm not there to make any friends. People aren't just gonna roll over and give me their money. So I have to apply some kind of leverage. Despite the growing tension, the agents must continue their inventory. But Maureen isn't calming down. You're yeah. standing here like you're stitched to the floor, Daddy, arguing with me about my stuff. Well, there it is. Um, basically, to try and defuse Have a look at it, look. Have a look. You're not helping the situation. No, you're not helping the situation yourself. You're still fucking looking, even though I've told you there are receipts for the stuff well, you, that I brought. You... That's... Maureen is more about it than her sons, 100%. Excuse me out of the way. With tempers rising, Mr. Carpenter calls the police. I thought she was calling the police. I don't think they understand the situation you guys in. You're not taking it. Hello? So, um, this is becoming a volatile situation now. But while Gary's on the phone, Mr. Carpenter confronts Connor. I don't want you in here. Leave the house, man. I don't owe you anything. Five seconds, Mum. Mind out of the way. You've got five seconds to leave the house. You have five, four. You need to sort He's it out. Well, just wait the police for you. Don't make me do You're this, bro. Time. Yeah, you might be doing all of that, yeah, but you don't know what I used to do back in the day. You're Two. wasting time. One. Fine. 
Right, now if you get physical. Lee, 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 Lee. Right, we need, we need police now. We need police now. You don't want to fucking do this to her. You don't want to fucking touch me. Get off. Get off. Get off. I'm a madman, you fucking bitch. Then Mr. Carpenter goes to the table and grabs a knife. Who would have thought that this is what we were turning on at 2.30 a.m.? Get out! Leave! Leave! I mean, the middle of the police system is getting framed with a knife. Get out! Stop! I'm trapped with you, man. Who's out here? I'm a fucking guy. BR2. Do you understand? Do you understand? Now you don't, my mum. I'm a fucking guy. Lee Carpenter, you going to jail? This might, they might charge you with aggravated assault. You gone. Are they actually going to lock somebody up? Fucking got you. With Connor and Gary in serious danger, all they can do now is try and keep themselves safe until the police arrive. He shouldn't even have picked that knife up. If you wasn't going to do nothing with it, don't even pick it up because now you ten times, it's even worse. You might have been cool if you would have just like ruffled their feathers, but now it's like... You finna get intent. <laughs> no, we can Gary watch Brown <laughs> and Connor Jackson were in Bromley, South London, chasing payment for an £11,000 debt owed by Lee Carpenter. I ain't got 11 grand. With payment unlikely, the agents began an inventory of assets to seize. I shouldn't be taking photos of my stuff. But when asked for receipts to prove who owned the goods, Mr. Carpenter's mother became agitated. Have a look at it. Then, the house, Mr. Carpenter decided to take the matter into his own hands. I want to fucking do this to you. I'm a madman, you fucking prince. And picked up a knife. Get hurt! I mean, the middle of the police system is getting framed with a knife. Fucking got you. I ain't afraid of you, yeah, you think you're beating At this moment, I would like to remind everybody that I did have a warning screen. With their safety at serious risk, Gary requests immediate police assistance. We're high court enforcement agents. We're in the property, and he's now threatening my colleague with a knife. Yeah, 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 for sure. If Even if the people who came to collect the debt wanted to drop the charges, like, nah, we don't want to pursue. It's, 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 it don't even matter, right? I don't know, a kitchen knife. Get out of my house! You're going to see a real fucking madman, dear. A fucking... Lee Carpenter. Think you lot big, man. I ain't fucking scared of none of you. Get out of here until the bobbies come. You're going to know where to hide, bro. Find your families, do you understand? <laughs> you know, it's the first time I had a knife pulled on me. Uh, so I was very apprehensive. I was just thinking, I'm going to do what I need to do to get home here. That was all that was going through my mind. I, I'm going home today. Mr. Carpenter's mother sends her son. Ain't the other dude an ex-soldier? Away from the agents to calm down. A few minutes later, the police arrive. Well, the police got there in two and a half minutes. This, I wouldn't be surprised if Lisa pull up. Hey, all right. We're not here to say we agree with them or agree. We're with in you. the middle. We're here to just keep them keep, them, keep them, keep them, keep breach the peace. So I just put my hands out like that and told yeah. you to take me away okay. because, in the end of the day, they're not taking anything from me. So you might as well just do that before someone gets hurt. It won't achieve anything. All it do is they want to get arrested, and then the property will still be taken, and you won't be here to know what's going on. Right. With the risk of being arrested, Mr. Carpenter must now calm down. All in all, I'm not going to lie. This is a good turnout for Mr. Carpenter. Because my boy, you was asking for a long sentence. Gary tries to reason with him again. Lee, this is nothing personal from us. 
And I'm sure it's nothing personal from you, but I understand your frustration. Ultimately, the debt needs to be paid. I'll give you some money, I'll give you the 150 a month, yeah, and that, that's it. With Mr. Carpenter only able to pay £150 a month, the agents still need to hunt for assets to seize, to offer... 150 a month is insane. What is that, 30 years? ...set the £11,000 debt. But as they look around the flat, they're in for a shock. Bro do not even got a bed, he's sleeping on laundry. Jesus Christ. And tires. Have you seen anyone living in conditions like this before? Nobody got very much. It's becoming clear there are few household goods to seize. But then in a drawer, Gary makes an unexpected discovery. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 380 quid. Lee, I found a load of money. There's 380 pound there. Hey, that's my only cash, that's my little bit. I'm gonna take that. That's my lump sum for you guys, isn't it? My savings. Go and take it, man. Gary has found 380 pounds in cash. But with the rest of the household goods of no value, the only way to resolve the case... Did bro just say that's my life saving? I understand why he's on edge like this. The way he reacted, bro ain't got nothing, he ain't got nothing to lose. Bro said, take me. You might as well put me in cuffs. He wants the, he wants the three meals in a bed. It's better than the way he living, he feel probably. Is to see if the claimant will accept a payment plan. Gary calls the office. Hi, John. We're at a case for Lee Carpenter. I've found £380 in cash in his room. Um, he's offering 150 quid a month. 150 a month, yeah. Yeah. Looks like he's done all he can do back here. Cheers, yeah. mate. Bye. The payment plan has been accepted. I've just informed the office that we're going to do an arrangement for 150 I'm not going to lie, this got to be one of the best... When I'm when when we speak of negativity, this is this is top tier. It don't get more. You know what I'm saying? And a month. I'm gonna keep the three hundred and eighty pound. I'll give you a receipt for that. Um, but we're not gonna take any goods. Are we happy with that? You gonna shake my hand? No hard feelings, mate, okay? Put whatever happened earlier, we'll put that to bed. The case may be settled for now. But for Mr. Carpenter, it will be six years before he is free of his eleven thousand pound debt. It's been a draining case for the agents. It's a result, eventually, and not the result we wanted, but the £380 that I found in his bedroom is a little bit of a sweetener. Oh, that was intense. <laughs> Best of a bad situation, that really, isn't it? Now, we came in knowing that this is going to be, from the verbiage that they use, oh, this is going to be one of those cases that but I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> A recent survey has revealed that the majority of people with large debts go into denial about their finances. 40% of those surveyed say they keep their debts hidden because they feel ashamed or guilty. High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Ball was a military policeman for 20 years before embarking on a career in enforcement. Together with Matt Highway, a former security professional, he all these new people is insane. travels all over the West Midlands, enforcing writs and seizing goods. Today they're in Beerley, Worcestershire. This is one that we both know well, uh, Mr. Geoffrey Samuel Scott. They're on their way to see Jeff Scott, an ex-professional footballer who owes four and a half thousand pounds in unpaid legal fees. But this is the agent's second visit to Mr. Scott in two days. Well, he denied who he was when we uh, first went to him, didn't we? And we showed him a picture on the internet of himself, um, and then he said, uh, you know, I admitted that it, it was actually him. As well as... Bro, you're world-renowned, you're a famous football player, like, you're not getting out of being identified. Cut it out. ...was lying about his identity, Mr. Scott told the agents he couldn't pay the debt because of tragic circumstances. He uh, issued us with a letter to say that he'd got uh, cancer, uh, terminal cancer. 
but the agents have had the letter Mr. Scott gave them checked out by his local surgery, who told them it was a fake. Park in the gate, mate. Why would you wish that type of... Why would you speak that on yourself? Why would you say that? <laughs> Words got power. Now Matt and Gary are back, and they want answers. Let's give him a call and see if he answers. Mr. Scott. Yeah. Mr. Highway, they're high quoting for. <laughs> Bro trying to pick up like he was terminal. He talking about some yes, hello. Bro, because stop it. Enforcement agents. I'm at your property, sir. I need to have another chat about this evidence that you've given me. I'm, I'm just about to go to hospital, I'm afraid. Where are you? Are you, are you at home at the moment? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, can we have a chat about this then? Uh, no. Right, why is that? Because my lawyer's advised not to talk to you. This is a live High Court writ. You've got a copy of that I gave it you yesterday? Mm, yeah. So we're here to enforce the writ today, sir? I'm not going to let you in. Okay, you do realise we have to carry on with our job, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, so no problem, thank you. Well, let's try and knock on the door then, mate, shall we? The writ allows the agents to make peaceful entry onto the property. So... The first one was negative because of all that action happened. This one is negative because this is a football player lying about having a very serious disease that takes hundreds of thousands, of maybe even millions of people a year. Like, it's a bad move for your career. You might be canceled. T. So they squeeze through a gap in the electric security gates. Hello, sir. Good morning. Through the gates, sir. You can't get through those gates. I have to let you in. You don't, sir. No. So this letter that you've produced. Just, just move off. Then. No, sir. No, sir. We need to deal with this issue. You presented me with a letter yesterday that isn't real, haven't you? We have, sir, because the doctors have confirmed it. No, the doctors haven't. They have, sir. Identity. They've confirmed that this letter is not real. In fact, the doctor on it isn't in general practice anymore. It's not even called the surgery anymore, sir. It's called Dorridge surgery. It's total fake, sir. Mr. Scott has the police on the phone. Yeah, I've got some high court enforcement officers here, and I'm just reporting maybe a breach of peace. Well, I haven't seen the warrant, no. no. I gave you the writ yesterday. They've given me a high court writ. But they haven't give, issued or given you a warrant. It's the same thing, sir. Different name. OK. Thank you, bye. The police tell Mr Scott the agents have every right to be in his property and they won't be attending. <laughs> police won't even show up for you. Once you say high court writ and enforcement officers, they be like, bro, this on you. You got it. Now Matt and Gary need to get to the bottom of why Mr Scott has presented them with a forged letter. Do you, in fact, have terminal cancer? Yes, I do. So why would you fabricate a letter from the doctors? I'm not prepared to answer that. Well, the difficulty no, is, in my capacity as high court enforcement agent... Just give me two. As Mr Scott goes to find evidence of his condition, the agents use the opportunity to get further inside the house. I wouldn't even be trying to do all that. There's two nice high-end cars in the drive. Let's see if they got financing on them. If not, we're taking them. So this is my hospital file. All of my appointment letters going back a number of years. So why did you give us a fake letter? Yes, please, sir. I'm not prepared to answer that question. Do you expect us to believe anything you gave us now, sir, if you're giving us a forged letter? Well, these, you can tell the originals if you want. But any of these letters could but have you been said, you said, do, Are do any of these letters going to state to me that you've got terminal cancer? Um, I don't know. I've not read them all. Right. Under pressure, Mr Scott finally makes an admission. I made a stupid mistake yesterday. I found an old letter. And then changed the dates? changed the dates. That's what I did. Somebody presents me with a letter saying that they're dying of cancer, and I believe that. But then when it's then found to be a forgery... It's only the date that's a forgery. Then it's, it's... The people, the stuff people say to, like, to make themselves not look bad, only the date is a forgery. The whole thing is forged. Oh, man. Y'all back or no? The date of the letter was forgery. That letter was produced for an insurance purpose three, maybe four years ago. 
three of my before. Have you read the letter, sir? Yeah. Yeah, it says you've got terminal cancer. Yeah. And the prognosis is two years. Yeah. So you've lived after the two years? I have indeed. I changed, I changed a little bit of the context. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yes. So not only you've changed the date, you've changed the context. Yes, yes a little. When someone lies to me, it just strengthens my resolve. You know, what people don't realise is we're very good at knowing when someone's telling us outright lies. We'll get to the truth no matter what. Mr Scott's lie has been exposed. But although it's a fact that the letter was Refresh a forgery, Rudy. the agents can't be sure that his claims about having cancer are also untrue. If he is genuinely ill, it could affect the decision on how the debt is repaid. The agents need to investigate further. I'm struggling to find anything that says that you've the my, illness that my, you say. My condition is classed as terminal. Right. But it's man it's being managed. I don't want to be living like this. I don't earn any money. I do some voluntary work for a charity, which is why I, I which I'm able to do at home. And that's it. Line. You gotta earn money still because there's still property tax no matter what. Even if the house is paid off, you still gotta pay the property tax. This is a discharge summary from when you were in hospital. Yeah. Um, dated, yeah, December 2014. Yeah, Christmas Day I nearly died and that is fact. Well, you've been discharged from the hospital on the 22nd no, of the I wasn't discharged that day, Wait, 2012. Says, I was admitted on the 2012. So Sunday. there's the admission day there, the 21st, the discharge the 22nd. The difficulty I've got, Mr. Scott, is the only letter that I've seen so far that confirms that you have cancer yeah. is a fraudulent one. Okay. It's part of our job to look out for vulnerability, and quite rightly so, unfortunately. Do, do terminal diseases cancel your debt? I mean, I know, like, compassion type situation, that the debt will move on to the next of kin. There's a set of people Always. that will hide behind that. Uh, and they'll try and use that to their advantage. That's our job as enforcement agents, to differentiate between the people that are truly vulnerable and the people who are just using it to their own accord. With no evidence that Mr. Scott is telling the truth about his situation, Matt and Gary are duty bound to continue enforcing the writ. I'll tell you where I am now, okay? Yeah. I'm asking you for the payment of the, the outstanding balance, okay? If you can't do that, then at this point in time, because I'm not presented with any proof of your medical condition, I'm going to carry on and do my job. And you, what you're doing is you're treating me as though I've never seen this before. Of course you can, yeah, help yourself. As Mr Scott has told Matt and Gary he can't pay the debt, the agents now search the family house for assets they could potentially seize. But some photographs on display ring alarm bells for Gary. So there's pictures of yourself and your wife. So your wife lives here as well, Mr. Scott. Yeah. But yesterday you told me you were divorced from her. No, I did not. You said you couldn't understand why you were still wearing the wedding ring. So you're not divorced from your wife? You... No, I'm not. Right, thank you. You feeling right, sir? I don't feel bad for bro. Take everything. Please, please take it all. But then suddenly, Mr. Scott appears unwell. Sir? And seems to lose consciousness. Matt. <laughs> Can I have an ambulance, please? Gary quickly calls 999. Um, Rose pulling out all the stops right now. I ain't never seen nothing like this. Boy. Just pay your debt. It's, what, what is it, like $4,000? He's, he's unconscious. Can you hear me, mate? People's welfare and people's well-being come first over any enforcement whatsoever. So, you know, if people are going to get sick whilst, whilst we're on the job, then we will do our damn best to get the professionals there to, to help them out. Minutes later, paramedics arrive and attend Mr. Scott. He's given the all clear, but advised to go to hospital for checks. Mr. Scott's wife then arrives home. Hello, madam. It's OK. No thanks to you, love. You haven't been here, in all fairness. As soon as he changed sort of medically, our attention turned to looking after him. Uh, and that's what we've been doing since, OK. With Mr Scott about to head to hospital, Matt briefs the office on the morning's events. Boy, if they still would have started taking inventory, I would have lost. Hi, Gary. We've gone through, obviously, normal protocol. Paramedics have arrived. Um, we've put him in recovery position, waiting for the ambulance to arrive. 
kept talking to him all the way. Um, they, they can't find anything medically wrong with him. He showed me like I personally think he's faking it. He's pulling out all the stops. I think they should continue. Since this morning, and not one of them mentions on it that he's got cancer. All right, mate. Thanks, Gary. The office advises that given the extraordinary circumstances, the agent should give Mr. Scott another 48 hours to come up with payment. I guess I'm mean, man. I would have, sir, while you're in the hospital, we're going to go through the house. We're going to take an inventory, um, you know, just to... <laughs> I don't care. We have made entry today, which means on a subsequent visit, we can force entry. Just make you aware of that. Jeff, I hope you get better. Guys, thanks for your help. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, guys. It's been a stressful case for the agents and they leave without seeing any evidence that Mr. Scott's claim Bro got an electric gate that opens like this. You think we think you don't got 4,000? You got that? It's about his illness were true. The lies were just a catalogue, weren't they? Just an absolute catalogue of lies. And then you catch him out and he'd go tell another lie. He's just, just full of them, wasn't he? And, you know, I really hope there isn't anything wrong with him. Hopefully he's in a better frame of mind to deal with the issue next time we see him. Matt and Gary acted fast to deal with a dramatic turn of events. But in Gary and Connor's next case, I'm in this personal debt in the season five. Personal debt action. in the UK has increased by more than ninety billion pounds in the last four years. During the second quarter of 2016, a leading advisory body in England and Wales dealt with over 4,000 new debt problems every day. Connor Jackson and Gary Brown are back on the road again, this time in Harrow, North London, to collect an unpaid debt of £4,000 owed by car dealer Akif Arkali. How much we have to offer him then? £4,148.51. pence. Mr. R. Kelly owes the money after a vi- R. Kelly? The king of R&B? I believe I can fly the R. Kelly from my area? Vehicle he sold to a customer was seized by police, leaving the new owner without a car and out of pocket. It's on this road, that one over there with a white thing on it. If Mr. R. Kelly can't or won't pay, the we'll take it away. Agents have the right to seize goods to offset the debt. The one with the Porsche on the driveway. I hate that when they've got nice, expensive cars on a driveway. Why? Why do you hate that? It makes my job too easy. <laughs> Like this. Yeah. What do you reckon this is worth? Boxster, 53 points. Probably more than the debt. Bring him his change. Hello, can you come to the door, please? Someone's coming. He's got car keys in his hand. Yeah, about right. Hello there. Aki Fakali. Enforcement agents. I don't know if you, if you guys know the full story. I'm a victim as much as he is. So I bought a vehicle. I sold on eBay. When he drove off, the car got seized off him. Right. By the police. Because he was bought with a stolen credit card. He got bought with a dodgy credit card. When I bought it, nothing was flagged up at, them, at that time. I ain't stupid. I ain't going to sell him a stolen car in my doorstep. You know what I mean? I ain't that person. I've got a family in it. Mr. R. Kelly claimed... We're not here to go over the particulars of the case sir we have a job to do we have a writ and we just hear that you know what i'm saying you have 14 days if you want to dispute it <laughs> we'll hold your money in limbo he won't get it you won't lose it it'll go right back to you if you win Claims that the original owner of the car should be responsible for the debt. How? But despite his protests, the case has been through the courts. A high court writ is in his name, and it must be enforced today. Listen, 
I don't have the money. I'm willing to pay you the money in instalments. I offered him a box lastra and a thousand pound on top to not go this far, but he didn't accept it. I've tried. To be honest, sir, none of this really makes a difference okay, to us. Know. If you don't feel that you need to pay the money now, then we're just gonna have to take one. <laughs> Look at the neighbor, it's so nosy. Bro got his arm through the fence like this. That's funny. These cars. They're, they're not even mine. You're gonna need to prove that then, mate. Mr. Arkali immediately calls the man who he claims owns the cars in the driveway. Amir, you need to come and pick up your cars. I've got the bailiffs here. He's going to need to bring sales receipts with him. Thank While we're you. chatting, yeah. my colleague's going to clamp these cars yeah. until we can see proof of ownership. Once we can see proof of ownership, then I'll unclamp them and they can go. I expect people to tell me they don't own anything. Everything belongs to their partner, their mum, their dad, whoever. But. Once I can get the message across, whoever does own the goods must prove it, then hopefully the pressure is on to a point where they know that we're going to take it anyway. Is that a Nissan Rogue? Unless it's proven. Moments later, the man Mr. R. Kelly claims is the owner of the cars arrives. Um, do you live here? Cars? No, 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 I live here. And why are the cars on this driveway then? Because I had no space. I gave a friend of mine to keep it. Right. We need proof of ownership. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm going to go and bring the paperwork. Okay. The man hasn't brought any proof that the cars belong to him. The agents are running out of patience, and Gary puts the pressure on. They're seized at the moment until we see proof of ownership, or this gets paid. We're looking for £4,148. Not going to get any lower than that, but it is going to get higher it. if we have to remove goods. Buddy got on a on a on a jacket, a light jacket. I can like I'm I'm peeping. I'm a reaction channel. I'm peeping. There's frost on the windows of his house. That means it's cold outside. It's actually cold. Look, Enforcer got on a thick, heavy winter jacket with a beanie. Bro is out here with the thinnest spring coat on. Has no insulation, and then under it he got a white beater. That means he got money. That means what I see is a man that can afford to be sick. Listen, none of these cars are mine, so stop saying as far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned at the moment, they are. He just wants his money, and you can understand that, yeah, surely. I, I know, I know. Well, what I'm trying to say to you is, for the past three months, because I had a newborn, mm -hmm. yeah, so I've been with my wife, so I haven't been working, so I haven't got any sort of income. It needs to be paid one. Did he say he... Well, what I'm trying to say to you is, for the past three months, because I had a newborn, mm -hmm. yeah, so I've been with my wife, so I haven't been working. So I haven't... That's cap. You got a newborn. You got money. 100%. When I was the first time my daughter, well, I was the richest I've ever been. I ain't spent a dime that whole nine months. Boy, I had, I was up a hundred. I know you have, you capping, you're a liar. You got any sort of income coming? Hello? It needs to be paid one way or another. Uh, have you got no sympathy? I've, I've just told you. It's not I mean. about sympathy. I've got sympathy for the client. Well, and I'm here to do a job on behalf of the client. Yeah. It can be very... <laughs> Bro just legitimately gave him a sob story. Then asked him, wait, did you... Do you not have the sympathy that I just delivered? What are you doing? Frustrating when you're dealing with people going through this ritual dance of trying to evade their responsibilities. But you just have to let them go through the motions and put the pressure on that you would normally, and hopefully eventually they see that it's a waste of time. As Mr. R. Kelly's friend has not returned with any documentation for the cars, Gary calls the office to see whether the claimant wishes to authorise their removal. I just need someone to go to the client on this case. If you could ask him if he wants us to remove goods, um, there are two vehicles on the driveway which we don't know who they belong to at the moment. Porsche Box Day? Yep. Red? Yep. Train is a four and a half. Got another vehicle? Nissan Duke? Yeah. Category D insurance. One nine and a half a trade, maybe, say. Okay, but both three are finance, yeah? No finance, mate. Dang, the Nissan Juke is more expensive than the Boxster? Okay, cool. The value of the cars would more than cover the £4,000 Mr. R. Kelly owes. But despite the fact that he's given him the runaround, 
Gary wants to give Mr. R. Kelly one more chance to pay before calling recovery. How much can you raise today? I can give him a grant to start off the payment. So you've only got 3,148 to find them? Tell him that he's got no money. He can only offer you a oh. thousand pound now and to pay the rest in his I'll time. tell you what, if I saw that you had no money, yeah. by coming in and seeing your living standards, then that may be a different story. Well, I'm not going to let you into my We're a bit of an impasse, aren't we? The bro really think he in control of the situation at this point still. Second of all, if this is a jacket, and it's a cheap jacket. Unpop the collar. Why is the pop? Like, why is the? Sometimes you can make an assessment on whether someone's probably good for the cash by the job they do, the way they carry themselves, the car they drive. These sorts of things will all tell me whether they can pay or not. I enjoy the game okay. sometimes because it's that psychological aspect of it that I'm, I get satisfaction from. All right, you sound like a prevert. Calm down, buddy. The agents have been outside the house for 40... Freaky debt collector. ...five minutes, <laughs> when Mr. R. Kelly's friend returns with some documents. So if there's a receipt now, you can see everything on it. I think that should do it. The documents show that Mr. R. Kelly's friend is the rightful owner of... This is insane. Is this an upside down triangle that they, they like you, you went to the barber shop and was like, bro, let me get it. The Porsche. <sighs> Gary, basically that Porsche is on his account and it's in his name, so I'll take the clamp off. Yeah. The Porsche may be out of bounds, but the nine and a half thousand pound Nissan is still a potential asset but it seems the threat of losing the car has prompted Mr. R. Kelly into action. I just heard him on the phone there, he's trying to get the money. Something tells me that if we keep pushing, that we could possibly get the full balance paid. Sometimes it's a battle of wills and who can hold out the longest. How did that phone call go? I'm gonna make a 3,000 pound payment. Mm -hmm. The remaining balance, I'm gonna pay 500, 500. Yeah, that's the best I can do. Gary calls the office to check whether Mr. R. Kelly's offer is acceptable to the claimant. Yeah, we could do that. We'll go with the three grand and uh, 500, 500. Cheers. Bye. The offer of £3,000 today and the rest paid off in instalments has been accepted. Yeah, we could do that. The client would rather not remove any vehicles, so he'll accept £3,000 today. Okay. Gary puts the Nissan under a controlled goods agreement. Sign there, print there, please. If Mr. R. Kelly doesn't keep up with his repayments, the agents have the right to return and seize it. Officially, I've got control of the car. If you're able but to prove... If I sell it, then I can pay the amount as well. Why are you going to sell it if it's not your car? How are you paying the three grand? I'm going to pay by card. Yeah, put your pin number in. This is the biggest fine I've ever paid in my entire life, no. It's been a good result for the agents. Could have walked away with 1,000, could have walked away with 2,000, but I used my own judgment to assess his situation, assess his body language. and He probably could have paid the whole thing, 100%. We're at 3,000. Bro made a fake phone call to make it look like he was calling somebody else for the money and had it in his bank account the whole time. 1,000 pound now. Uh, the client would be happy with this as a we. Take care, mate. Oh, bit of a bummer for him, really, isn't it? If what you're saying is true, then it's, it's unfortunate. Really unfortunate? But, really bad luck. Yeah. But we are not one to judge. We got there in the end. Three grand's not bad. I reckon it paid a balance. Yeah. You think they want us coming back again, embarrassing him in front of all his neighbours and friends? Yeah, probably. A recent survey has found that while rent arrears are a growing problem for landlords, behaviour by tenants is one of the major causes of dispute. Last year, almost a third of private landlords had their property damaged by their tenants, while more than one in ten had experienced antisocial behaviour.
High Court enforcement agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Birmingham to carry out an eviction. Where are we off next then, mate? And we've got a um, straightforward writ of possession. The tenants, Mr Pervais Akhtar and his girlfriend, haven't paid rent for nearly two years. And the landlord is thousands of pounds out of pocket. Don't know what the story is, to be honest. We shall find out. But the agents aren't here to collect the arrears. Their job is to get the tenants out today. The landlord, Sajid, has a shop next door to the flats he rents out. Morning, sir. How are you? You all right? What's the reason for the eviction, sir? Well, never paid for rent. That's bold. Your landlord owning a shop next door, seeing him every day and not paying him and running it up to 10 bands. Violence. But as the landlord tries to open the front door, it becomes clear that this eviction isn't going to be straightforward. Yes. I think he's got something from the door. His wife just went out not long ago. Yeah. Something down there, isn't it? Jammed it, isn't it? Yeah. It seems that the door to the flat has been barred shut from the inside. That's Hello? Crazy. Open the door, sir. High court enforcement, sir. Open the door, please. Sir, you're only going to make things worse because we'll cut the door off its hinges and then you'll get no time at all to leave the property. So behave yourself, open the door and we can talk about it. You need to open the door now, sir. You're going to do what, sorry? You're going to wrap the bar around my head, are you? With Mr Akhtar clearly unwilling to cooperate, Matt starts to force entry. Now I can see. Is it? It's like a weightlifting bar. The door is so tightly wedged, <laughs> Matt is forced off his feet trying to prise it open. But then, the tenant's girlfriend arrives home. We need to get this door open, sweet. We could have given all the time in the world. If he'd have come and opened the door, he's just shouting abuse to it instead. As Mr. Akhtar opens the door for his girlfriend, Matt and Gary seize their opportunity to gain entry. Right. Do you know why we're here, don't you? Yeah, I know what you're here it's for. It's time to go, then, yeah? Yeah, we're right. going. Are you going to be long, sir? How long are you going to be? How, How long is my dick? All right. Okay. So I'm just being... <laughs> Polite, so you don't have to be right. like that. So what you'll need is your identification, any medication you're on, things like that. We only got this room here. Look, have a look. We'll be packing up, Dave. It appears that the tenants have already packed most of their belongings. While the agents wait for them to finish in the bedroom, they take a look around the flat. And they're in for a shock. Just absolutely destroyed the place. It's caused a hell of a lot of damage. But then, Matt makes a sinister discovery. A five-inch kitchen knife impaled in the wall. It's not right, is it? It's not stable. <laughs> See all the knife in the door? So he's been chopping it, look. He's been just chopping it, look. Yeah, these people are crazy. Then Gary spots another potential weapon. <sighs> it told a whole crib about, man. The agent talking about snitch, bro. I'm th I, this is residual income for me. I'm a businessman, I'm not living by the code of the street. Give me my money, or I'm calling 999. <laughs> have found themselves in an unstable situation. That's a good little drawing alone in the flat with a potentially dangerous tenant. It will take all their tenacity to complete this job without getting seriously hurt. They are. We don't need a recap. Oh, Mr. And make sure there are no other...
Now the agents have to act quickly and make sure there are no creative, other potentially man. dangerous items in the property. Finding them everywhere. It's only small, but it could do a bit of damage, couldn't it? With Mr. Akhtar still in the bedroom, Matt quickly takes all the blades and knives they found out of the flat. Just keep an eye on him, mate. Yeah. Don't let that door close. With the blades and knives safely stashed away, the agents need to get the eviction back on track. Now, in the knowledge that Mr. Akhtar is an extremely volatile person, Bro holding that crowbar tight. They must tread carefully. But he's still clearly angry with his landlord. If I see him outside there, I'm gonna hit him. Okay. I don't need that time to stay away, alright. If I any of them if I see him, I'm gonna rip their fucking heads off. Because it's only a matter of time I'm going to get a hold of him. Just be nice and gentle, get it sorted, yeah? If you want help with anything, I'll help you, as long as you stay calm. I'm all right, thanks. All right. With Mr. Akhtar almost ready to leave, Gary finds yet more items that could be used violently. A police baton. And another meat cleaver. Oi, let's put that away, eh? Chopper. Oh, that's not it, sir. Gary immediately takes the knife and the baton away from Mr. Akhtar. Bro is insane, Mr. <laughs> I'll keep hold of that for you, alright? No, no, I'm not touching you, I swear to God. I'll you give you I'm going to keep hold of it for now, alright? It's fine. I'm not going to nick it, sir. You're just not having it. It's not the nicest of things you want. That's three we found. We don't want anyone to get silly with that, so uh, just take it off him. The knives and the baton may be out of reach, but the agents still have to get Mr. Akhtar out of the flat peacefully. Gary tries to get him on side by making conversation. How much protein do you drink, mate? Fucking loads, man. Yeah. Loads of it. <laughs> to work. Probably does a little steroids, too. So, buddy is aggravated, very, very aggravated. Look out himself, and he's doing all this. Yeah, you don't need to do the weights tonight, do you? Yeah, I was the agents have now been in the flat for nearly two hours, and Mr. Akhtar's time to pack is up. But before he leaves, he makes a shocking admission. Good job that you did come today. Why? Because I was peeling at the flat bit by bit every day. <laughs> like a fucking gerbil look, it's been gnawing all that. Yeah, I can, work I can see the worktops. And nibbling at everything at the door. Was that, was that that big chopper that done all that? Yeah, my teeth have been is this? Nibbling at it. Is it? Yeah. With your teeth? But as Mr. Akhtar and his girlfriend leave, there's one last surprise for the agents. Get this fucker. Pickaxe, hammer. Come on, there you go. No hard feelings, I wasn't against you anyway. Bro had every bit of artillery. See you later. With the tenants finally gone, landlord Sajid can now safely inspect his flat. Oh, what? So the main, the main damage is in here, so... He's been attacking the doors with machete, I think. The cook has had it. Looks like he's hammered every single knob. He's just been hammered. The true extent of the damage Mr... Yeah, you won't have to... You might as well renovate. ...the Akhtar has inflicted on the property is becoming clearer. You can see how nice the flat was originally. Everything is damaged is obviously intentionally not the case. I think that's been hit extremely hard by something. He's going to have one hell of a bill. When he came, he said he was homeless, his family disowned him. Huh? I've never rented a property before and I, I kind of gave it to him. Never do that. Never do that. Yeah, never rent a property before. Yeah, he got to your, he touched your heart. Yeah, he got to your heart. Don't get nothing. Bro, you come at me and tell me you're homeless, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 for two years he's been here, not paying no rent. So, thank God he's gone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very welcome. Okay, no problem. Okay, next one's a lot better. It was a brand new flat, apparently, that nobody ever lived in. He's damaged things that he knows will cost the landlord money to put right. So it's a vendetta between the two, but we've got him away and the eviction's complete.
सुनते To y'all, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. This probably was the top, the most negative one we've ever watched. I'm gone. <laughs>